Uh, Coach, first question. I mean, how did it feel just to get the first game out of the way? You know, it was a strange feeling for me because, again, um, you go from a place where you basically grew up your whole life and other than 12 years of my life, I, I've been there my whole life, to knowing everybody at the scorer's table and uh, and then where you have a pretty solid reputation to kind of starting over. So it was a... It's a unique experience, you know, because it's it was something different that I haven't done in many, many years. So I had some apprehension, but I have apprehension for every game, especially the beginning games of the year. So, uh, And I think the biggest thing was just our guys not having a firm knowledge of everything that we're doing. That's probably creates a lot of anxiety as well. What did you, what did you see that you liked? Uh, what did you see you guys are going to have to improve, improve on go, going forward? Well, I like the fact that we competed. I thought, you know, we had very few moments where we didn't compete. Um, I like the fact that we were fairly resilient, that we didn't cave in when we, when we went down seven. Um, I like the way we drove it. We did a good job of getting to the rim and getting to the free throw line. Um, we have a lot of work still to do defensively. Um, and we have a lot of work... Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have to shoot the ball better than that. I mean, if you shoot the ball like that consistently, you're going to get beat. So we have to do a better job of making open shots. Do you think it was just an off night by your by your players as far as shooting goes? I mean, I mean you know what? I haven't been around them enough to really know. Obviously, Mike Lewis's uh, statistics indicate it was an off night. So if he shoots his normal percentage, then we're not that bad. Uh, but if, you know we have to at least be able to shoot 35, 36 percent from that three line, or we're gonna have some issues because we're we don't have we haven't proven yet that we can score consistently inside. Now we we've gotten to the basket, which is a different way to score inside, which may be our mo this year. In the second half, you seem more aggressive attacking the basket. Was that by design, especially with Taryn and Renee? We simplified. We just kind of spread out ball screen and kind of just drove it on them. We knew that when push came to shove, they were going to play those passing lanes hard. So we kind of just went to went a direction that we thought we could have success in. And so Taryn and Renee did a really good job of getting to the rim. And then they kind of, they tend to hug up. So there's not many passes to be made. It's pretty much, hey, drive and finish. And so we kind of took what they gave us. You had an interesting story afterwards about Renee you know, you approached him earlier in the week wanting to start. And for him to respond with that kind of effort, what does that show you as a coach? Well, I, I like guys that have been hitting the mouth and down and out. And uh, I like I like underdogs. Um, so, uh, and like I said, I kind of hit it off with him when I first got here. There's certain guys you just kind of gravitate towards. And he's had a tough time, but somehow we kind of clicked. So... Uh, you know, he put up, you know, he, he wanted to start and he put up the numbers that indicated he made the right decision. Um, as far as Eric Williams and Titus, what did you see from them in their first collegiate game? Um, I think Titus kind of showed that he can be a good role player on almost any team in the country because defensively he's very good. Uh, like, he'd be a pretty good commodity on a really good team because he could shot block, he comes to the ball defensively. He should, certainly isn't a finished product, and I think the biggest problem he has is just belief in himself offensively. He's better than he than he really acts, and that's something that's going to have to change. Eric Williams is the opposite. Eric Williams thinks he's really good, and sometimes he flings him up there because he thinks he's really good, and he's got a very short memory. So he's a guy that can miss five free throws in the first half and then rally himself and make, which is a really good quality. But sometimes it gets him in trouble because he he has such good belief in himself that he gets himself in bad positions. So uh, I think Eric showed that, you know, in every every situation we put him in, he showed that he could be a solid rebounder. He showed that he's a solid athlete, that he can score and rebound. He has to get better at the little things. I thought he had a really good... Uh... Moments there, at the end, he hit the three on the wing. It came an important time, and then he had the block. I mean, his versatility for a freshman, you know, really has to excite you. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with him is um, uh, 
making sure that he stays hungry. Uh, he'll be hard not to start at some point. Like I'm just trying to make him earn that starting spot and mostly earn it in practice. He's he's already shown in the games that he can he deserves to play. He's put good numbers up, but I don't like guys that don't practice great. And he's had some some average moments in practice, so I'm trying to make him earn every step of the way. But he's going to be a good player. The, the bottom line is, hey, what what success will, have, will do to him, and then also, you know, how will he handle like the adversity or not winning or or things like that. So, uh, you know, he's got some. He doesn't have a, a like an outward personality. So, like again, I compare that position to LeBron a lot. LeBron has this outgoing personality, so it's hard for me to get used to a very quiet guy there, and so that's a little bit of adjustment both ways for both of us. The end of the game, uh, St. Francis Brooklyn got back into it. You even said, you know, the team kind of tired out. Uh, what, what do you do to address that? It's a concern. We won a lot of games at Akron because we were playing 11 guys, and every close game we, we won most of them because we were a little bit fresher than the opponent. So when people get tired, they miss open looks, they make mental mistakes, uh, they don't guard as well. So when you're only playing eight guys, things like that happen. Had that been a three or four or five point game, we'd probably lose uh, because we just didn't make any plays when it mattered. So I'm not sure really how what to do with it other than just try to get a more rest, try to play a little deeper bench, play Crad home even more. Um, but it's a hard, it's a dilemma. I think the, the players really took ownership of it though in their post game comments especially Renee and, and Taryn, um, that, that has to, is it something that it may be a case of, you know, trial by fire? Again, we're not, we're not comfortable yet. You know, we haven't had a lot of situations. We don't have a lot of mileage in on, you know, milking the clock and then scoring at the end of the clock. So it's a little bit of an experimentation at this point. Like, who could do what? Like, they don't know what they can do, and I don't know what they can do. So, you know, like at the end of the clock at Akron, like we were going to Big Dog, mm -hmm. you know, and he was going to make a play one, one way or the other. At the end of the clock at St. B, we were going to LeBron, and he was going to make a play for somebody. So uh, with this group, uh, we haven't had a lot of situations to really tell us who can make plays when it really matters. There's a lot of really good players that are middle relievers. You know, they, they can get you to the ninth inning, but they can't close it. And then there's a lot of guys that, they may not be great throughout the game, but when the game matters, they can make plays. They just have it. And until you know your team really well, it's hard to know. So we're, we're still in the experimentation stage. You get another crack tomorrow against BMI. Uh, what do you expect? A little different kind of a game. Um, Brooklyn was a hard pressure team, and we did a good job of only making nine turnovers, which I was happy with. We didn't have a lot of assists, but we had nine turnovers, which if you make nine, you're in pretty good shape. That kind of offsets a bad shooting night. Um, and we got to the free throw line as well. This team is a Princeton-style team, so that's a, that's, a, that's a big change. So you have to have tremendous discipline when you play those Princeton-style teams because you got to deal with the back cuts and the scissor action and a lot of things that require great discipline. Uh, and then they'll, they're going to hold the ball throughout the clock at times. So you have to be able to have enough discipline to th play through the clock. And then also be patient enough on offense that you're not playing defense the whole game. So I think that's, that's the beauty of our schedule is you're going to see a bunch of different things uh, early on. But I, I envision a very similar type of game for most of our games this year that, in that it, they're just going to be like going to the dentist, taking the Novocaine shot, and trying to grind out as many wins as we can grind out. I don't think, I don't think many will come easy. Do you think you handled the the eight man rotation well on Saturday for the most part? Um, you know, I really am very uncomfortable playing guys thirty seven minutes. I really don't like it. Um, the question is, do I have any choice? I don't really feel like I have much choice, so. I got to figure out ways to get them rest. Like we didn't do much for two days, you know, uh, after the game. We did. We sh we shot for forty five minutes uh, last night, and then we practiced today under two. And you know, 
you have to watch your prep. And normally I practice hard the day of the game with my teams, taped and hour and a half hard, but I can't do that with this team. So uh, I guess I'm just going to have to learn as I go, but we're going to get more bodies too as we go. So uh, the good thing is they all know they're going to play. The hard thing is is how hard I can get them to go and practice because they also know they're, pres they're trying to preserve themselves at times. So you can't get better unless you practice harder. It's a hard dilemma. Last question. Did you do anything to celebrate Saturday night or just another day at the office? That's a good question. So um, <laughs> when Shaka Smart was with me at Akron, we used to go out after every win. You know, we'd eat, you know, and he, he used to say, hey, we got to take advantage of every win we get, right? So we went out to eat again after the game. The problem with me is I can't sleep after the game. So I, I, I drank six iced teas during the game. So I went to the bathroom 100 times during the middle of the night, so it kind of wrecks me for the next day. So I'm always rallying myself to get ready for the next game. And so I have to be really careful, you know, just trying to make sure I maintain my sleep and my sleeping patterns. But I think you should celebrate every time you win. Now my celebrations, like I'm not a, I'm not much of a drinker, so my celebrations are food. So I'm always gonna eat. All right, coach, thank you so much, we appreciate it. Appreciate you guys.